welcome back my favorite game developers to a brand new long video and in this one when we run the game you'll see that we have the time bot invader 2d <laughs> why does it sound like that but anyways we have two buttons the exit button that just displays this text right here and the start button when we choose it there we go we go to the first level how cool is that we can shoot we can get health we can also die so let's not waste any more time and let's get started okay so time to create a couple of menus and we are going to start with the title screen because obviously every game needs a title screen so what i decided to do is to have the a title screen the test one and I'm going to convert it into the title screen yes reload and I'm going to remove the skeleton I'm only going to keep the player and I'll add a couple of breakable items so in the prefabs uh, let's increase the size in here just a bit and where is it the pickups portals rooms um, Okay, so a couple of breakable pots, so I'll add one in here, another one in here, another one in here, and just a couple of pots that we will have fun destroying. And in this menu, we will also have the two buttons that will tell us to either start the game or exit the game. So, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to right click in here, I'm going to add a UI canvas, and this will be the main menu canvas i'm going to set the event system in here i'm going to make sure that it is um, sorry a screen space overlay and make sure that the scale with screen size and there we go 1920 by the 1080 hit enter double click so we can see it properly in here and what are we going to have well we are just going to have this screen where we move around but we'll also have two buttons and the name of the game up here so um, maybe we should make this a bit smaller I don't know I was still thinking of how are we going to fit all of this maybe we can try to select all the parts and the doom player and just um, make all the parts a bit smaller so on the scale, maybe make them uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 by 0 0.2. No, that's too small. 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. Yeah, sure. And then the Doom player is also 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. So there we go. If we try to run the game now with our little tiny dude, Oh, as you can see <laughs> he is still very big and he cannot pick up the items because the scale is very small that's because the I just realized that the animations will keep him big so let's bring him back to one and no worries we'll try to fit everything in here so back to one save that okay anyways run the game we will have the sprite guy he will be walking around uh, he cannot pick up things because in here we have some kind of error and that's because we don't have the manager We don't have an on trigger enter on the coin. There is a problem. Why is that? Well, because the game manager isn't available also on the coin so we're going to stop the game and We're going to select all of these pots and make sure that the item dropper. Let's just uh, remove the component for now and just keep the breakables so we avoid any errors so there we go we break some parts and have fun and we'll also add two keys in here to allow the uh, player to select whether to exit or to continue the game so in our uh, screen and our canvas right here I'm going to right click select UI add a text mesh pro this will be the title so uh, game title so time bot invader uh, I'm not sure I wanted to call this maybe doom bot invader but let's just keep it as it is change the font auto size increase the max 
and let's make it a bit bigger let's set it in the middle and let's increase the max even more so there we go we need a big huge title for the time bot invader 2d <laughs> and we can add some underlay some lighting some glow so for example we can increase the or the underlay and add a color in here to make it a bit cooler so go ahead play with this so increase the softness the offset on the y or something like that so choose the colors that you find appropriate maybe make this one uh, red or black or i don't know no black is bad and let's see maybe increase this to fully red and on the y increase it uh, up so there we go so we have something like a time bot invader 2d um, it's not very pretty but it does its job and now we're going to add two more buttons so in here i'm going to right click and ui and add a button this is going to be the start button and i'm going to move it a bit to the left and this is where we decide where we want to put it so because we don't have too much space you can see how i'm looking at the game i'm going to set them maybe right here let's see if we run the game how does that look so having a button down here no i think that's not bad that's not bad at all so i'm going to maybe increase the size and in the resources we can go in here and you can find the menu elements that i've provided you with so these are the buttons so back in our sprites let's see do we have something under the ui elements ui elements I right click let's create one for the buttons open this up and let's drag the buttons all the way into unity and let's see what we have in here and let's go to multiple apply sprite editor let's slice these babies up there we go so these are perfectly sliced with their shadows so apply the changes now we have these and i'm going to select the start button and as you can see we have the normal rect component that we are used to and we have also the image and the button things right here and you can add an on click event on this button whenever it's clicked you can change the way it behaves so if the normal color for example can be completely black or white or red or whatever you can change the highlighted color so for example if we move our mouse over this button if we press the button it becomes for example uh, green and if we select I don't know selected color I'm not sure what that is so if I run the game right now you'll notice that if I move over the button it becomes red once I click it it becomes green so this is how buttons work you can play around with a lot of things in here but what I want to focus on is changing the sprite source and uh, let's see what kind of buttons we have in here so something not good happened in the sprite editor and how many sprites do we have one two three what are these empty things in here mm, i don't like the looks of this but anyways let's try to add this button there we go so you can see this is the button that we've added let's try to set it maybe to native size or maybe increase it on the y so there we go we can set two buttons on each side of the title screen and maybe you can add a different kind of button maybe this one which is a bit more clear i think it's better so now when we run the game you can see that we have a really nice looking button and it even changes color when we press it and uh, maybe you don't want to have that kind of thing maybe the only thing that you might want to have is not to have this pressed Maybe we can make it darker or something or keep it as it is but just change the uh, alpha on it which is also a good idea but I'm going to make sure to have it some kind of green color just so we know that we are pressing this button and now with that we have the start button let's duplicate this and move it to the left and this will be the exit button so exit button and now what we need to do or you know what maybe i did this too soon let's just delete the exit button because we want to change the text in here you can see that we have button text we don't want this text we delete it we will add our own text which is a text mesh pro and obviously we're going to make it the cyborg the bold the auto size increase the max 
set it in the middle and that's all that's all that we need to do and I'm going to increase the size of this one so let's make it a bit bigger and set it in the middle and just make sure that it fits properly now the only thing that might bother us here is that the um, when when we try to change for example the color of this one oh no no everything is working so should we make it dark i think dark let's first of all try to type the name so start game okay so apparently having it completely dark is not the way to go what color should we be choosing maybe even we should remove the underlay but if we remove the underlay in here remove also the underlay up here so this is why sometimes i don't like to use uh, text mesh pro because everything is kind of related we are changing the entire shader of what the text mesh pro is shaders are a whole different breed of uh, information so i'm not going to delve too deep into that so back in unity and uh, let's see how that looks if i run the game is it visible so start the game eh, not very much when it becomes red it is more visible maybe we can change the background of the button so i'm just playing around honestly i'm not sure what i'm doing i'm just testing things out just as you are no i think this one is better for our start game and uh, now that we have this one now we can duplicate call it the exit button and let's move it to the side on the other side and in here we are going to change the text to exit game hit enter there we go so now we have two buttons we have set up the menu we can walk around we can destroy these things we can shoot around us we're using the very scary buttons there we go and we can start the game exit the game but as you can see they do not do anything right now in the game so what we're going to do is add a couple of functionalities to these so i'm going to go into the scripts i'm going to right click and create a folder for the menu double click in here right click and create a c-sharp script for the main menu a manager uh, let's just call it menu main menu because we would have to add it to the main menu manager if we did what's the problem in here we have a problem with the uh, sound effects I think yeah I think it's the problem with the sound effects the problem with a couple of things there are a lot of problems in here because we didn't add all the manager and all of that stuff but we don't really care about it uh, this will not be a problem because we are not actually doing anything in this uh, level so now with the main menu let's add it to the main menu canvas and let's double click and open up the script right here so we are going to first of all create a method for the exit game so public void exit game and because we are still in the editor and have not implemented the game this will not be working but if we write application.close I mean application.quit this will exit from the application and quits the player application and as you can see but because we are in the game mode of the unity editor this will not work so what we'll do is we'll just add a debug.log and we'll say that we exited the game trust me when you do build this game this button will work don't worry about it anyways this will run the game and if we go back into unity if we go to the exit button we can scroll down in here and in the on click event we can press this plus button and we can add first of all an object which we will access the functions of so if i add the main menu you'll notice that now I can access functions and one of those functions so for example I can access game object and do a couple of things in here maybe turn off the game object direct transform change name and so on and so forth but I can also access the main menu and you can see here I have canvas canvas scalar graphic ray caster and all of these are components inside of the main menu canvas that I've provided the button with and it also contains the main menu so on the main menu I'm going to select it 
and you can see that I have a lot of methods that I can use and one of them is the exit game that I just created. So when I click on this one, I run the game, I can walk around and do the things I do and then if I click on the exit game, you'll notice that we exited the game. Why is we capitalized? I don't know, but you can see that this button actually works and I can press it. So now it's time to create the start game method and that is going to be your challenge. So set the scene in the building index as the first scene and the first level is to be the second scene. So you remember the build index. If you don't, you'll need to go ahead and check it. It's in the file build settings, I believe. Yep. Yes. So we need to start the game. In order to start the game, we need to load the first level. To load the first level, obviously, we need to have a scene manager and all of that good stuff. I hope you didn't forget how to do that. It was a couple of uh, sections ago. Create the start game method. Make sure it's public. And the method access the scene manager and get the build settings of the current active scene. And then you'll need to increase it by one. And just as a small hint, you need to access the scene manager, get active scene and dot build index plus one. So with that out of the way, pause the video right now and go do the challenge. Okay, welcome back. So first of all, let me remove the start and update. I'm not sure we'll be ever using them. And here I'm going to add Unity engine dot scene management. And now I'm going to create a public void void start game and this one should be capitalized and this one should not so start game let's open up the squiggly lines and in here i'm going to access the scene uh, manager dot load scene and what scene should i be loading well first of all let's go to the file build settings and the title screen is already the first one. So what I want to do is I want to get the index of this one and then increase it by one. So I'm going to go ahead and get the scene uh, manager dot get active scene. And in here I'm going to get the build index and I'm just going to increase it by one. So we go immediately to the next scene. Save that. Now let's go back into our game and let's see if that works. So I'm going to run the game. We walk around, we destroy things, we exit the game, it doesn't work. We start the game and it doesn't work because we have not assigned, how smart of us, we have not assigned the start button to do anything at all. So main menu, how many times will I make this mistake until we finally save that, run the game start the game there we go so now we are on the first level how cool is that and we know it's the first level because we have all these skeletons in here see even though we, we didn't do any changes to this level but because we've changed the prefabs of the skeleton they can now pick things up obviously there is a couple of things that we need to change but for now we know that the start game works the exit game works we've created a title screen we are going to commit our changes and we are going to see you or actually I'm going to see you in the next video.